Hi, my name is Dr. Ross Hauser. Welcome to the office here in Fort Myers, Florida of Caring Medical Florida. These are a, a lot of the symptoms of cervical instability. I'm, I'm actually going to talk about one that I haven't actually really talked about previously, which is nausea. We are just getting a plethora of nauseated patients. They're not nauseous to us. They complain about nausea when they come in. No, I mean, you know, and, and a lot of them have seen a, a lot of gastroenterologists, right? So they do an endoscopy, they don't find anything. Once in a while, they'll get diagnosed with gastroparesis. Gastroparesis means that the stomach isn't working right. Well, what's the nerve supply to the stomach? It's the vagus nerve. So cervical instability by decreasing vagus nerve input to the stomach causes the stomach not to contract normally. It doesn't secrete stomach acid. It doesn't open up the pyloric valve like it should. So you can get pyloric stenosis just from cervical instability. So, those, so that's a common cause of nausea is a decrease in the vagus nerve input to the stomach, to the esophagus, to the digestive tract, to the duodenum, to the digestive tract. And then basically the food, the food, because the person can't digest the food, food causes nausea, but the real cause is cervical instability affecting the vagus nerve. And I call that cervical vagopathy or cervical vagopathy. And if, if a person gets a digital motion x-ray that has nausea and it shows instability and that instability gets resolved with prolotherapy, the nausea goes away. Another way that cervical instability causes nausea is that the upper cervical instability affects the medulla and the medulla is the center of nausea. It's called the area postrema. Area postrema is in the medulla. It kind of, it's kind of the relay center of nausea in the body and anything that affects the brainstem the medulla part of the brainstem, which is just above the cervical spinal cord, that can give you nausea. So cervical instability can affect the medulla, then you get nausea, or if the cervical instability blocks the cerebral spinal fluid flow, that increased pressure in the brain, that can give you nausea by many mechanisms, including affecting the area postrema of the medulla. Then. Another way that cervical instability can affect uh, nausea is it screws up your balance. It can affect the, the eustachian tube, and when the eustachian tube isn't working right, you can get nystagmus, vertigo. Uh, I talked to a patient today by teleconference, and the person has maldebarkment syndrome, which is where you're on land, but you feel like you're, sea, you're still on the ocean. So imagine like all day long, you know, you're like this. Obviously, you're going to feel nauseated. Some people also, because of cervical instability and the increased intracranial pressure it causes, they can have different visual images going on this retina to this one. So imagine if like you're looking at things and the images aren't the same. Can you imagine like how nauseated that will get you. So if you have unexplained nausea and you've seen regular doctors, I'm just telling you, you got to get an assessment for cervical instability because you probably have it. And the good news is that if it's found, you get some prolotherapy and uh, normally very quickly the nausea starts to go away. And man, if there's one symptom that none of us want to get beside chronic pain, man, it is nausea. None of us likes nausea. So I hope this is helpful and you have a nausea-free life.